I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. In our last video on Windows Virtual Desktop, we've covered the deployment of our environment, how to manage that environment, and now we want to get into some of the factors relating to user profile management. So why is this important? You want a user to be able to log on to the Windows Virtual Desktop environment, and you want them to have a consistent user experience, meaning that when they log on, they log on to a profile in Windows that is their own. It has whatever customizations you permit them to have. It has whatever items pinned to the start menu, the background wallpaper, whatever it is that you want to give them the permission to be able to do to customize their user profile. When we do that, we want to store that profile somewhere. Traditionally, there's been several different methods in order to do this. There's been third-party tools. There's been roaming profiles uh, based in Windows Active Directory. But today, around Windows Virtual Desktop, we want to cover a, a different solution. So let's go over to the documentation. And under the How To section over here, we want to go to Set Up a User Profile Share for a Host Pool. So this doc is going to walk you through the entire process of what we're going to see today, just so you know where it's at. And this is all based on a technology technology that we acquired a while ago called FS Logics. And they have a bunch of stuff that's out here on their website that you can look at for other solutions. What we're going to talk about is profile containers. Another one that could be leveraged as part of uh, Windows Virtual Desktop would be Office 365 containers. And this is where things like OneDrive for Business would come in. So we have here that we need first a virtual machine that will act as a file share. Now for this lab, I'm going to build this out using my domain controller because it's a box I already have. This is not a normal best practice. You should have a separate file server that's going to host these shares or anything else. You know, you shouldn't do that on your domain controller, but this is just my lab. You need to build a VM. Once you have that VM built, and we're going to create basically a simple share, and we'll get into some more elaborate ones as we go uh, down this video, but we need also a security group created in Active Directory where we're going to put the users that will be allowed to access this share. And then once we do, then we're going to set up a reg key and that'll allow us to set up the profile containers and that's what this doc section here is about. So with that, let's jump in. So here we are in my domain controller and I've got remote desktop windows open for my two target systems, which are Windows 10 multi-user session VMs. And I'm showing you here the users so that you can see the only profile set up at present is my WVD admin account. All right, and that's what I'm logged on to with these sessions. So let's minimize this. And here is the remote desktop app and I'm gonna launch a desktop session. And you can see from the personalized settings box in the top, this is the first time this session has been used on this VM. All right, and we're logged in. So if we go to start, we see that this is the plain vanilla out of the box Windows start menu. And now looking at our domain controller here so we can see both of our systems, we see that it is on, on WVD-1 that Superman has logged in and set up a user profile. What would happen if WVD-1 went offline. Well, when Superman tries to log on, he's going to be pushed to the other system, which is WVD-0. And when he does, he does not have a profile set up. All right, so here we are back in WVD-1. And just so we can show this real easy, I'm gonna customize our start menu a bit. So let's log off here. So here we are back in PowerShell, and I wanna show you a cool way to do this. So we're gonna get our session hosts from our Windows 10 tenant and host pool. And when we do, we see we've got two of them, and we had logged on to WVD1, and that's where Superman is. So now we're gonna run a command that's gonna block WVD1 from any more sessions. Set session host, tenant name for this host, for this session host, allow new session false. All right, so now that we have set that, and you can see here that the value for WVD0 was true, so if we get our hosts again, then we see WVD0 allow session is true and session false on WVD1. So let's try to log back in. Okay, and here we are. So let's go to the command prompt. We are logged on indeed to WVD0. And when we look at the start menu, all of our changes are not here but it's not the desired behavior. And this is where FS Logics comes in. And as you can see from our domain controller view, now we have a Superman profile on zero as well as one. So let's flip everything. So we're back in PowerShell and we're gonna run our command again. And this time we'll set number one back to true. 
and this time we'll set WVD zero to false. And we can see that that is now correct. True on number one, false on zero. We're still logged on to our zero VM here as Superman, which we can verify. So it's just not allowing new connections. It doesn't kick me off when I make that kind of a change. So you can use this as a strategy for draining hosts or not allowing new connections so that you can do updates and maintenance on them. So just a, a good trick to know. So let's sign out of this VM and we'll sign right back in. And you can see that we're logged into Superman on VD1 and there's our customized start menu. All right, so the desired effect here is now we want our customizations in our profile to carry with us whenever we go on whatever box we end up on. So to do this, we need FS Logic. So let me sign out. We need to get our, our shares set up. So let's take care of that. So I've got a folder here on the C drive for user profiles and I'll just go to properties, sharing, advanced share. Again, we don't wanna do this as a best practice on our domain controller, but this is just my lab. So I'll create a new share. I need to give it permissions from a Active Directory group. So here's my AD and I've already got a group here for WVD user profiles and it's just a normal security group and I've added my user to it so back in our share we'll do an add and there's our group and we need to give it full control over this share and we can see the share so now let's go back to each of our VMs and we're going to need to install FS logics which you can find the link to download from our docs and you would get this zip file to which I've already extracted and we go into x64 and we go to the FS logic apps setup and we run this and I'm just going to set this up with this trial license key here and we hit install and that's successful so we'll hit close. Now the other thing that we have to do is we have to set a reg key so here's the reg editor and the reg key here is under HK local machine software FS logics we need to create a folder here called profile so we right click on FS logics and we go to new and add a key and the key name is profiles and we need to add a new D word and this will be enabled and the value will be one and then we need to add a multi string value and this will be VHD locations now in here is where we need to put the path to the share okay, so there's my path and we go in here and enter that value all right and you can see the path in the value now let's repeat these steps on the other system and that is now set up on both of our systems. So for this to work for Superman, we do have to clean up the profile that was already generated, which we can do under the advanced system settings and user profiles. And we just delete Superman's profile. Okay, and that's been cleaned up. So now let's log back in as Superman from our agent. Now through the logon process, we see something new. Please wait for FS Logic app services. So this is now generating the user profile for Superman and storing it on that centralized share. So no matter which box we log on to, we will have the same profile. And since this is the first time the profile is being created, we get our personalized settings. Okay, and we're logged in. And since this is a new profile, we have again the vanilla setup. Okay, so we've customized our start menu and we have changed our background. So now let's log off. And we can see that we were logged on to WVD1. Now that we've logged off, we're looking back at our domain controller view. We don't see that profile because it's not stored locally. It's stored on our share. So we get a GUID here with a underscore username so that we can keep track of it very easily. And then inside there is a disk. Now this is the equivalent of a user profile disk. We've stored all of things related to that user image inside this hard drive file. So now every time the user logs on, it's going to be logging on to this profile, no matter which system it's on. So let's demonstrate that. So as you can see, we're logged on and our profile did follow us. So let's see what box we're on. 
and we are on WVD1. And if we look at the user profiles on WVD1, we can see that we've got Superman, but, but there's also a local Superman. This is one of the awesome things about FS Logics. And what FS Logics does is it mounts a drive onto your system that is the shared drive that's on the network, and it mounts that as a disk to the local system, and it mounts two folders in that disk. There's really two sides to your profile. So the folders related to your profile are stored in Superman, and then the settings related to your profile are stored in the local Superman. And so that gets mounted to the system, and you make all of your changes, you do whatever you want to in your profile, and when you log off, we unmount the drive from the system that is actually stored in the central share. So let's now force WVD1 to not accept any more logons. All right, and we'll run that same command again. And we see that it is now set to false. And let's log off of our session. And let's log back on. And you can see here we are logged on to WVD0 with the same desktop, the same customizations that we made to our start menu, and it's all preserved inside our profile. And when we look back at our session host, we can see that on session host one, where we had logged on originally, the profiles have cleaned themselves up. And now we have the local and the Superman stored on zero. And again, everything managed centrally in our share. So I hope you've enjoyed this look at Windows profile management on on Windows Virtual Desktop. Give this video a thumbs up if you thought it was pretty good. Click on our subscribe button so you can be uh, joining the Azure Academy and hit the notification bell so you can be aware of when our videos come out, which is roughly once a week. Thanks for joining us today and please give me a comment below with what scenarios you wanna support and what videos you wanna see on Windows Virtual Desktop or anything else going forward. Happy learning.